Welcome to Daily Overdose. One of the things, I think this is the case anyways, I think people are always looking for an excuse to have their character corrupted. Because if your character is corrupted, then you get to lie and you get to cheat and you get to steal and you get to betray and you get to act resentfully and you get to do nothing. And that's all easy. It's easier to lie than to tell the truth. It's easier to do nothing than to do something. So there's always part of you thinking, well, I need a justification for being useless and horrible because that, that'd be a lot less work. So you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. Mr. Reynolds and I are working on a new book this year called The Great War Between Good and Evil. And there is a war on. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. So then what's necessary is a system in which the good side is always winning, but never is the winner. Where the evil side is always losing, but never is the loser. That's a very practical arrangement for a successful ongoing game which will keep everybody interested. And you must uh, recognize then that this outgroup is your necessary enemy, whom you need. He keeps you on your toes. But you mustn't obliterate him. If you do, you are in a very dangerous state of affairs. But darkness is always trying to move in and take all the territory. But if you turn on the light, it, its energy starts to repel darkness. Darkness begins to move away, move away. And the, the brighter the light, the further away the darkness must move. If you walk into a dark room and turn on the light, the darkness is what? Gone. But here's the point to remember, not very far. The darkness seems to be, yes, it's gone, but it, it's waiting, waiting for its chance that if energy, light loses its energy, darkness has a chance not to move back in. Battle between good and evil on a playing field of chaos and order. It's the eternal game. And, you know, you can play that out in the external world, but part of what the religious enterprise is about, and the Christians have really contributed to this, is the notion that that sacred battle is fundamentally spiritual, which is to say, in some sense, fundamentally psychological. It's to be, it's to be fought on the battleground of the soul, internally. It's a subjective issue. How do you defeat evil? You defeat the evil in your own heart. That is how you do it. Now here's the good news about the war between good and evil. Evil is no match for good, but good must be active. Weeds are no match for human activity. But if you stand still, how far in will they come? All the way. They'll grow right up around your shoes. But if you get busy, how far back can you take them? As far as you wish. If you think that compassion makes you weak, you are wrong. Compassion may cause a man, a person, to sacrifice his life for, uh, to save other people. And um, we have to redefine what is compassion. It's very powerful. And uh, we have to embody that kind of uh, energy uh, in, our, in, our, in our daily life. You have to re-educate people about uh, this. Uh, uh, you have to show what compassion can achieve. When, when someone is angry, uh, he is being burned by the fire of, of, uh, of anger. And if he knows how to practice compassion, anger will die down very quickly and he looks much better, much more beautiful. Much, much more attractive. <laughs> and that is why we had to exemplify is embody that practice of uh, compassion in order to persuade other people to, uh, to do the same. Uh, compassion helps us to sleep well. Compassion protects us better than guns and uh, bombs. 
uh, and money. Many of us think that uh, we are safer to, uh, if we have more money. But you can lose your money very easily. But compassion is a kind of energy that can help protect you much, much more uh, effectively than, than money. And compassion helps you to relax. And your body has more capacity to heal itself. Uh, compassion helps uh, uh, you to be pleasant, to be loving, uh, and you can restore communication with the other person easily if you have compassion in yourself. You understand the other person. Uh, your compassion can help you do your business better because you are uh, in good relationship with other people, including your employees. So you can list a lot of qualities uh, of compassion. And uh, we should have a man, a woman, a community of men and women practicing community, uh, practicing com compassion like that in order to show people that compassion is something very powerful. How long would you be depressed and upset and angry? What would it take for you to pull yourself up and start all over again? How resilient are you? Could you handle it? Could you learn from all your disappointments and start all over again? What would it take? Resilience, being able to withstand setbacks, broken hearts and broken dreams. The ability to readily recover from illness or depression or adversity. It's like you don't have a choice. You can either be a pathetic monster or you can be a monster with some power. Those are your options. There's no non-monster alternative. You want to be safe? Forget that. That's not in the cards. You're not going to be safe. Well, then you have to be meta safe. And that's way better because then you're not safe, but you know how to cope with danger. Take the little setbacks in stride. Take the little successes in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should, keep your disappointment at bay and keep getting ready for opportunity. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. We've been, I've just told you, my wife and I have been married 33 years. That's resilient. You were happily married 28 years. So all the rest of them years, you just came in the house. Because you believed in something more than your feelings. You believed in something more than your happy. You believed in something more than the temporary inconvenience of, re of restrictions and oppositions and confusions. You abide when things are going right. And you abide when things are going wrong. You abide when everything falls into place and you abide when all hell comes through. So I say as you look into the future, while the people are giving up, feeling like victims, feeling powerless, becoming negative, feeling that they can't make it, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the mindset of that it's possible. And it's going to be hard, easy, it's not an option. But if it's hard, we will do it hard. Whatever is required to snatch victory from the jaws of the deep. And it's worth it, yes. It's worth whatever we have to do. And once we know that, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Here's something, ladies and gentlemen. When you make it important, it's not a preference. It's not negotiable. It's a must. But when you decide, I'm going to do it, regardless of the opposition, Regardless of the difficulties, I'm going to make this happen because it's important to me. I'm saying, the universe will yield to you. Life will never be the same again. Live your dream. You can tell the true values of others by looking at what they do, not at what they say. You can also look at your own actions to decide what it is that you truly value. Remember, it's not what you say or hope or wish or intend that is a true expression of your values and beliefs. 
It's only what you do. Children are very aware of this and they ignore the advice of their parents when their parents say, do as I say, not as I do. The fact is we all seem to know that a person's actions are the true reflection of their innermost convictions. There's a great deal of confusion and unhappiness in the world today because many people feel that if they say something emphatically enough or write about it, it means that they truly believe it. But this is false. You only truly believe what you do. Your actions do speak far more loudly than your words. For example, if you truly believe in the values of persistence and dedication, it'll be evident in the things that you do every single day. If you truly believe in the values of honesty and integrity and self-discipline, you'll demonstrate these qualities in your every behavior. In fact, you can tell what a person values by looking at what they did in the past when the pressure was on. It's only when you're forced to make a choice that you know what it is you really value. For example, when you have to choose between family and work or between money and honesty, your true values come out. The wonderful and important thing about your values is that you can develop them in yourself by disciplining yourself to act consistent with them, even if you haven't yet made them a fixed part of your character. Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.